Good morning, it's nice to speak to you this morning or whenever you're watching this. I just wanted to encourage you with some verses and some thoughts uh, which I've uh, written down here in front of me from Romans and a few from the Gospels as well. I think if you were to ask someone randomly what they wanted from life, the response or the word you get back mostly, most of what would be fullness, whether that would be in the sense of a relationship or a career opportunity. I think we all want to live full lives. But there's a reminder in Romans that if we are to be brought to fullness, as it talks about in Ephesians, in this world, it won't be through getting anyone or anything. It won't be through getting anyone or anything. Instead, as we know, it's through a pouring out of ourselves for God. And we can see examples of this in um, Jesus' life, for example. God came to earth and lowered himself. He was God incarnate, Emmanuel. He poured out his life for us to the point of death. Even the disciples dropped their nets, dropped their livelihoods and poured themselves out for Christ. If we look to the world, we see this self-sacrifice or we catch glimpses of it, certainly more during this pandemic. NHS staff, carers, uh, volunteers, even if we, if we think about an obituary, the attributes we see most talked about are the important ones and they are the ones such as love and care, generosity, forgiveness. And it is difficult, of course, to pour yourself out. We know it's easy to lean on ourselves, our own interests, and to, to, to chase the things of, of the world, of status and aspiration and projects that we have and popularity and whatever that may be. And so we know that living for the world is to be filled up mainly. And so therefore to pour out for God is completely countercultural. And so why do we do this? And then why should we do this if we do not already? And in Romans 12, it talks about pouring yourself out because of God's great mercy. And what is this mercy? We know it. It is a new birth, as it talks about in Peter, a new birth into a living hope. That is a response to this love that we have from God. And therefore, we also shared ourselves, our ambitions, our aspirations. This is what Paul calls true worship. And with a love so great, um, if he reconciles us whilst we were still sinners, I don't think it's unreasonable or shocking to pour out this new life that we have for him. It is, of course, challenging, as I've said, but there's a response to a love which is better, better than life itself, as it says in Psalm 63. And there are two examples I just wanted to share that help us to remember this image of Romans 12. Um... One of them is in Luke chapter 7, about the woman who took uh, an alabaster jar of perfume and washed uh, Jesus' feet and used her hair. And then linking from this, Paul's description of what we are to be for God in 2 Corinthians. We are to be the pleasing aroma of Christ to those who are being saved and to those who are perishing. That is everybody. So... We are to be poured out with reverence for God. But also we are to be that fragrance. And I think this is a particularly helpful image to remember. I have a, a fragrance here with me, my prop. This is a aftershave I've had for seven or eight years. What is a fragrance? A fragrance is expensive. It's used sparingly. It doesn't hold anything but its smell, which is sweet smelling. And its purpose is simply to diffuse and to move in a room. And so 
yes, uh, w with those images, um, our prayer is that we would not be used sparingly for God, but we would, like that lady at Jesus' feet, we would be poured out for him. But not only that, but that we would be this fragrance as well to go with it. To move Christ into new territory, to be intentional with our conversations, um, to be a pleasing aroma to God uh, in our holy lives uh, with reverence uh, and submission. So I hope that's encouraged you. Uh, it can be difficult to think about Romans 12 um, in a way that, that sticks in the mind, but those two gospel, or the, the, the gospel reading in Luke and the description in Paul, I hope, will help you to remember that we are to be poured out, but also uh, to be a fragrance of God. Uh, so thank you for listening. I hope that's encouraged you and I'll hopefully speak to you soon. God bless.